must know things about Class C airspace. Class Charlie? Nah. Class no cap. Because no lies will be told in this video. Straight in it, no chaser. All Casamigos, no ice. Lego. Numero uno of the five must know things about Class C airspace. Class Casamigos. Class no cap, baby. Class Charlie. All day. One of the best things you want to know about it, of course, is how it's depicted on your sectional chart. And that's going to be with those solid magenta lines. Those usually a double ring on that sectional chart, which indicates two separate rings. You have an inner and then an outer layer ring. Magenta line is going to tell you two separate altitudes of that Class Charlie airspace. So you want to be mindful of that. Don't just think it's one universal set of altitudes that applies for both of those rings. Pay attention to that sectional chart. It may tell you something along the lines of that outer ring indicating that Class Charlie starts at, say, 3,000 feet and it goes up to 4,800 in this particular case. But then when you look at that inner ring, it may start at the surface and go up to 4,800 feet. So as you're approaching, you want to make sure that you're always inside that class trolley. If that's where you're part of your flight plan and part of your flight path, but paying attention to those altitudes and knowing how it's indicated on your chart is going to be numero uno. Numero dos. Can you fly inside of a class trolley airspace if you are just a student pilot? Yes, you can. Si, senores and senoritas. You definitely can fly inside that class trolley as a student pilot. So you want to be mindful of that when you get ready to go on that solo cross country and start thinking about that stage in, ter in terms of your flight plan and your flight journey. Always planning what airspaces you can fly in and which one of those that maybe you can't without certain permissions. So you want to be mindful of that. Class Charlie is definitely one of those ones where you could be whipping that thing inside a class. No cap, baby. Hey, hey. One piece of equipment you're going to need when flying inside of a Class Charlie airspace is a MOSI transponder. Now you're gonna need that MOSI transponder when you're flying inside of a Class Charlie airspace, also when you're floating on top of that thing above a Class Charlie airspace, but you don't necessarily need it when you're flying under a Class Charlie airspace. But again, when it comes to equipment, it's always best to have more than what you need. For example, let's just say for any particular reason, you didn't have a mode C transponder and you were flying under the Class Charlie. That was part of your flight plan. But when you were getting ready to approach and you were getting ready to go under that Class Charlie, you were being rerouted in any, any particular reason for any situation and you had to go inside of the Class Charlie above it. Well, technically, you really can't because you don't have the necessary equipment to do so. This is why it's always best to have more than what you may need for your flight plan. Hey, if you had it and didn't necessarily need it, that's good. But to need it and not have it, that's a whole different ball of wax that you don't want to be in. So always be thinking to have more than what you may need for your flight journey and always program yourself to think that way. So again, floating across the top of that thing, you need one. Inside of a class, Charlie, you need that mode C, baby. But underneath that thing, you don't need it. Hey. Boom! In most cases, you're also going to need an ADS-B inside of a Class Charlie airspace along with your Mode C transponder. And it's going to tell you, of course, what your location is via satellite on that ADS-B. This is noted for there are some exceptions to this. For those exceptions where you don't need it, of course, you can always look at your far aim, port 91225, and it can kind of tell you where those exceptions may apply. But again, when it comes to equipment, you want to make sure you have your personal standards that you try to like go by. And one of those personal standards that I like is always to have things more than enough than not enough. But sometimes when you're whipping up things, particularly when it's that old school tail wheel and you're doing your thing, they may not have all the equipment. So you want to be mindful of this in your pilot journey. This is why it's always critical to know which equipment you need, which equipment you don't need. You may be at a stage right now as you're learning where the aircraft that you're flying in as a student pilot may be equipped with all the amenities and everything that you need. But once you get further down the line, you may be in one of them old schools, baby, whipping that thing with the diamond in the back, sunroof top. Hey, and it doesn't necessarily have all of these devices in a lot of the modern technology and the avionics may be a lot different. So you want to know what's necessary and what's not necessary for each of these individual airspaces. And you can always check for those exceptions in your four aim and various other documentation to know exactly what you're doing before you're planning that flight plan to wherever your destination may be. Numero cuatro, going to have that two-way radio, baby, because the two-way communication, same rules apply. Just like you slide into class D and you slide into them DMs and you establish it two-way communication, you want to do the same thing in Class Charlie, baby. No cap, no lies told on them radios. You're going to need that two-way communication, so you want to have that as part of your equipment as well as you're going to be communicating and establishing yourself and letting them know you're entering that airspace and being given directions as to what they want you to do when you enter this airspace. 
Class No Cab, Numero Cinco. Finally, the weather requirements for Class Charlie airspace, easy to remember at this point. Three, one, 52. That's why it's important for you to remember that nomenclature of 3152 because as you can see as we go through the various airspaces, you use it quite a bit and it applies here for class no clap. That's three statue miles of visibility, 1,000 feet above the clouds, 500 feet below the clouds, 2,000 feet horizontal. Easy way to remember that, obviously a popular aviation aircraft is the Cessna 152. So you already should kind of think about that kind of number, 152, and you're gonna need three 152s. How many aircraft you need? I need three 152s. Three statue miles visibility, 1,000 feet above, 500 feet below, and of course, 2,000 feet horizontal. And if you can't remember the order that it's in, always remember A, B, C. So if you got the 152 down, because you associate that with the Cessna aircraft, you can easily remember the order it lies in with the A, B, C, above, below, across. Nice and easy. Remember that, lock that in because you're gonna apply that to various kinds of conditions of the bare minimum of what weather needs to be for you to fly inside of that airspace. And remember, this is just the minimum air requirements. You're also gonna have your personal minimum, minimums which may be a little bit more broad than that as well as you get into that and start setting those personal minimums for yourself of when you feel comfortable flying inside of a certain airspace. And these are five no cap truths about Class Charlie airspace. If you frequently fly inside of a Class Charlie airspace, tell me your story down below. Maybe something funny or nice that happened to you along the way in your aviation journey if you fly out of a Class Charlie airport or whatever's going on in your pilot life. If there's anything I missed, hit the comment section down below, baby. Each one teach one as we grow together. I am Donovan Batiste. Don't forget to like this video. Hey, subscribe to this channel. Leadership mindset, one time and forever, baby. Love yourself. No cap.